Hello everyone and welcome back to Kerbal Space Program. This is Megnius here and today first we're going to talk about a very special thing that's happened on my channel. Finally we have reached 20, not 20, 30 subscribers. 30 subscribers. I love you guys. You're all so awesome. Please tell your friends. Subscribe to my channel if you're watching and you haven't already. You guys make me happy. It is for you that I continue making these videos. Alright, so a couple of things happened while we were gone. Um, in terms of making rockets and things, I spent a few minutes making rockets and indeed decided to make something that I believe could go to the moon. And I more or less succeeded in making a rocket that can travel to the moon because I crash landed on the moon. Um, yeah, it didn't work out exactly as I planned, but we do have something on the moon at the moment, but it, it wasn't very successful. So. We're, we're going to see if we can do this correctly. I'm going to show you the launcher that I used. And I'm going to explain the process of how it was made. Let's see, where where is it? The moon lander 0.3? Maybe? Is this it? I believe so. Alright, so first of all. It doesn't have RCS, which may be a bad thing. I'm not exactly sure. I like using RCS, but I didn't really want to add the extra weight, and I was pretty sure that I could do it without RCS. So, uh, what to do, what to do. I guess, I guess we'll try to add RCS. I'm not really sure what's going to happen. So, maybe this won't end up working very well, but let's try to add RCS. Close enough for me. Alright, let's save that. And... Okay, so I built this lander, and it has little legs. These legs can withstand some impact. Not very much, actually. They're, they're sort of weak, but oh well. And ASAS, RCS now. Hopefully that'll be able to right my lander if it falls over. And there's an engine there for the third stage. This nonsense here, if you look at the way the fuel lines are coupled, this tank and this tank go into this tank, and this one goes into here, and then these two go into the middle tank. This is called asparagus engines or asparagus whatever decoupling. Anyway, the idea is that these two tanks empty first, and we drop them on the way up. It makes us lighter, then these drop on the way up, and this has more fuel in it. So generally, we can continue going longer, drop fuel, er, not fuel, but drop empty tanks earlier, etc., etc. There are struts and decouplers in here to hold things together because things will fall apart if there are no struts. I don't know why I put a parachute on there because this is definitely not coming back from the moon. And separators so that these do not hit us and destroy us on the way up. All right, so with all of that explained... How about we go ahead and try to launch this? The staging is complex, but I believe that we can get it done. Hopefully, maybe. Um, if all goes well, we won't crash land on the moon a second time. But anyway, here's uh, here's the Macdrin, Durden, and Shepming. If we do make it to the moon, I want Shepming to be the first one to actually walk upon the moon. Alright, throttle up. Have to be careful of overheating these engines. The fuel tanks are orange, they will overheat. SAS on. Do not turn on RCS because it would cause issues. And here we go. Five, four, three, two, one. And we're off. Hopefully nothing explodes. As you can see over here, some of these are going down faster than others. These two here are overheating. Pull it down just a little bit. These two are the ones that are going to drop off first. These decouplers and separators are staged so that 
I believe it'll be these. Yes, yes, I am correct. A little bit more thrust. Shepming, we're going to the moon. Hang on. Ugh. Oh, and I added these on top because one of my earlier versions ran out of fuel. It wasn't enough to get to the moon. And drop. Very nice. So with these extra things of fuel on top, it was quite enough to get to the moon. Just not very good at landing yet. Not very good at landing. Crash landing wasn't very pretty. Yeah. But it'll be it'll be better this time because we have RCS, right? Right? Surely. Up, 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 out of the thick atmosphere. Everything seems to be going okay. Don't want to overheat these engines. That happened like three times when I was making various prototypes. I guess I should have called this the Moonlander 1.0, huh? Oh well. It'll be fine. When this engine appears a nuclear engine, I read somewhere on Reddit that it's generally more fuel efficient when you're up in orbit. Doesn't waste as much as mainsails. Alright, getting up there, nice. Into the not thick at all atmosphere. And let's start our gravity turn. And drop those. Oh god, SAS, hold on. Just hold it there until we get out of the atmosphere completely. Okay, and we should be out of the atmosphere. Very nice, very nice. And as soon as we click here... Alright. Should be space, I believe. Wait, 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 wait. What's going on? No, no, no. Wrong way, wrong way, this way. Yeah, there you go. Oh, it wiggles. Not good, not good at all. Um, let's see what's going on. Uh, that's quite enough. Yeah, I probably burned a little bit too much getting all the way out there, but... That's that's okay. All right, so let's turn. Ah, oh, sigh. Alright, so I guess uh, while we're waiting for that to happen, I may as well zoom out and show you guys the new planet that's out beyond Jewel. There it is right there. Elu. It is an ice planet. And it's beautiful, I guess. Sort of. It's very icy. Is that an impact crater? Yeah, probably. Nah. If you like icy planets, it's pretty far out there. It has a highly elliptical orbit compared to everything else. Alright, very good. Where are we? Almost there. Uh, no. Sigh. Alright, I'm close enough. I don't care at this point. I'm going to start burning. And to hell with the AP. This is taking too long. Burn. No fuel. Fuel is disappearing. Increasing my orbit.
Where's the moon? It's over there. Hmm. It's close enough for me. Probably going to edit some stuff out of this video. It's probably going to take too long. Let's see. And good. Intercept course. Huh. Pretty sure that will actually make us slam into the moon. Wonder what that would be like. That would be pretty hilarious, but uh I don't want to die. Oh, let's go with that. Let's see what happens. Let's see eight hundred meters per second. Yeah. Yeah, I can do that. So this... This is probably going to be my first video where I attempt to do time dilation, where I try to speed up time in the video, because watching me try to get into moon orbit is really just something that you probably don't want to see. It's probably pretty boring. I don't really have much to say during during this sort of Ah, oh, stop wiggling SAS. All right, very good. Almost there. How much fuel? Not not a lot of fuel. Ah, oh, sigh. This isn't good. Already having to use these. It's also not good. Oh well. We're gonna do our best, see what happens. Out, 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 out. When I crash landed on the moon, I was able to do this with the second stage, so. Alright. See, so enter here, through there. Probably want to increase it a little bit more. All right. Um, gonna see where that takes us. How much? How much fuel do we have left? We we have some fuel. That's good. All right. Now. All right. And going to go this way. See, that doesn't make much sense. If it's that way, I should start going around that way. Uh. 